Hey guys, Wave618 here. It is the 20th of July and we're going to do an update on Bitcoin. It has been a while, obviously, we've just been consolidating for the last few weeks, so not really too much to discuss. But it looks like a big move is on the very near horizon, so I thought we'd throw out a video right at this moment. So in today's video, what you can expect, so we're going to talk about the macroscopic picture, looking at the BLX chart all the way from the genesis of 2010, looking at the Elliott Wave count and this very key pitchfork to determine what I'm looking at in terms of the macroscopic view. On top of that, we've got these very key pitchforks that I am using right now to monitor, to basically hold the price action. So we've got a major pitchfork and a smaller pitchfork that we're currently monitoring. On top of that, we've got the very key Camerula pivots on the weekly time frame. These are really, really working very well. Over the last four years, these have been working absolutely fantastically, and we'll help we'll look at these to try and determine where we can expect price to find a bit of support. Uh, on top of that, we've got the very key simple moving averages. We hear these talked about a, a lot, but we can't ignore them. Very important indicators. So these are the key things that we're going to discuss in today's video. Okay. Before I dive right in, I will say uh, it's been a while since I've done a, like a special offer on any of my products. So we will be doing a special offer on Cryptology. More details on that will be at the end of the video for those interested. It will be a first come first serve basis um, offer uh, going out to the first three applicants. So do check that out if you are interested. All right, but sticking to the TA. Basically, so we have come up all the way to, what was it, 65K, pretty much to the dot. And it was at 62k I mentioned there was a reason for a lot of caution. In fact, there were some key points in this whole price action to the upside where I was saying you've got to be careful. Uh, for me, I was always seeing this whole move up as corrective. Okay, Despite it being parabolic, I know it looks really aggressive to the upside. From an edit wave point of view, there was a good argument that we're playing out a very, very big corrective pattern, which I see currently as being a running flat. OK, um, just to put this fib projection on, this was the the main thing that we were targeting on to look for our key levels of resistance. So it was as such. Let's bring it all into view. So, yeah, fib projection taking us from our December 2017 high down to the low here. Uh, and you've got the key fib targets. Now, there was an argument for a double top here, here at 20K. So that was one call for resistance. Once we broke through that, there was every reason to go rushing up to the next level, which would be your 1.236, which was at 30K. So that was the next target. After which, getting through that, the target was 40K, after which the target was 62K. And you can just see it really had that parabolic nature to it, kept burning through these levels, did respect them to some extent, but eventually it failed at the 1.618 and that is where it has started to come down. I would still say it's following this big ABC. Okay, so before I talk about this ABC, I want to show it on the macroscopic picture, just looking at it from the genesis from 2010. So this is the BLX chart on the weekly time frame. So we got the first wave, very, very clear to me. This is a one, two, three, four, five. Okay, when you go in on the linear scale, it looks a lot more regular. Obviously, here the wave one looks very, very big. But as I say, going on the linear, all looks really, really regular. The wave five is by far the lengthiest wave, despite looking smaller on the log scale, because that's what the log scale does. So that's the count that I've got. Initial major wave one. I don't think there's any doubts about that. OK, before I knew some people would argue this was wave one, two, three, four, and that was fifth. OK, now that we've gone up from here, it's very clear that this was not the fifth wave because this is not a major wave two. It's been way too short. OK, so that count has gone out the window. I think everyone will be respecting the fact that this is a major wave one. That's a wave two. This is wave three. And this is where the ambiguity comes in now. Where is wave four? OK, so there will be people out there saying this was wave four finish. OK, and they're now looking at five waves up for the final five. So that would be a one, two, three, four, five. OK, so I've written that off, not completely, but I think it's less probable. Uh, but for me, this move up fine. It looks quite impulsive. This did not look like a wave two to me. And this price action here, definitely not impulsive. You have to zoom in on the lower time frames to really appreciate it. There was nothing just focus on that bit of price action there. Nothing impulsive about it. OK, so because of that, I then thought about other possible explanations for how this could still be corrective going up and be part of um, a, a major wave four here. So the other argument for me was this being a wave one, two, three, 
uh, and then a wave four triangle, this being your A, B, C, D, and E finishing here. And then we go up in an impulse to here, where you could argue you've got a fifth wave finish. Now that count is still valid, okay? Not my preferred count, but it's still valid. That would basically mean we've finished a major grand cycle to the, yeah, a, a wave five cycle. So that being a wave one, two, three, four, triangle, fifth up to here. And then we're going to correct for a couple of years. Okay. For me, that although that count is valid, it doesn't fit in with the macroscopics looking at all the other markets, all the other key sectors. You know, you, you've got your stocks, you've got your commodities, you've got your Forex and your bonds. Yeah, looking at everything together, looking at the fact that stocks are looking really weak right now, you always have to have some kind of asset that is going to absorb any selling pressure in stocks selling off, which I do foresee. I see a lot of stock market weakness. It may be a little bit too early to say that it's going to be a, a, a catastrophic collapse in stocks, but it could very well be the start of it. If you just check my last tweet, um, I was talking about some key reasons for that. But if there is that selling off, yes, it probably will affect crypto and it will come down to some extent, but I think it will absorb a lot of the selling pressure as money will go into crypto. It will be an oversold asset. Yeah, it'll be almost at 61.8% of its uh, all time high. Um, so it'll be a, a nicely oversold asset uh, at a time where money needs find, to find somewhere to go, something that is future proof. And in my opinion, crypto, blockchain, it's not just going to vaporize it's, it's 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 there for the future it makes sense uh, and it just requires some sovereign debts to lead to um, some defaults and all of a sudden you know major uh, economies are adopting uh, crypto i see it as being the future and certainly uh, i can see money flooding into it so i see it as being almost like bonds were a safety net previously during the 2008 financial crisis bonds are now clearly there's no reason for money to flood into bonds we're at zero in interest rate zero percent interest rates is really it's, it's lost its value as a safe safe haven now it's really been expired so we've got to find something else gold i don't see it being the uh, safety net because it's too overpriced it's at all-time highs pretty much um so yeah you're left with things like crypto so that's my speculation and it's why i think this is just gonna be a short-lived move down and I'm looking for the lower warning line to find some support here. So basically this pitchfork, very, very key. It's using the 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 candles back here. I'm ignoring this anomalous wicks to the downside. Um, we've got this high and I see it as a, a truncated bottom round here. So this is where the third pivot is. But basically it's holding the price action really, really well. We hit the median line, uh, tested the lower warning line, a couple of tests of the lower median line. So it's just following the, this um, this channel, these channels really, really nicely. And I would not be surprised for us to retain the pitchfork coming in at the lower warning line. Now, when you look at this, if you look at the general trend that it's coming down in, it would come in at around 15K. And I'll talk about that 15K as being my ballpark target. Um, so I'll talk about it a bit more later on, giving a few more explanations for why I think that's key. All right, so just coming back to Bitcoin. So uh, so this is your bit stamp chart once more on the daily time frame. What I'm seeing is this being a major ABC, okay? Um, here we've got our food projection. So I've explained why the 1.618 was key. So this, all the way back when we were at this point, this was my tweet from back... Um, so around this time, 13th of May, I was expressing caution to the group. We had this... Um, on the total market cap, so we had this kind of confluence. So we hit the upper warning line of this pitchfork. So it was an original pitchfork, first, second, and third pivots on the log scale, hit the upper warning line to the T, and we also had Fibonacci confluence. We basically extend that wave from here, and the 2.618 Fib extension was hit very, very nicely. Big wick to the upside also, all pointing out you know some major weakness, and we eventually started to come down so this is where i start expressing to the group you know take cover basically it looks like we could be heading down um so yeah basically um 62k certainly a major level of resistance and we're now coming down now let's just talk about what you know some of the smaller uh indicators looking at the shorter time frames um following this price action to the downside so let's remove this fib um, so some of the other key things. So these two pitchforks, we can look at these live. So if we just uh, bring these on, 
Yeah, so this is our major pitch fault. In fact, let's just take the smaller one off a moment. So we have our first, second, third pivots, original pitch fault, log scale. And yeah, I mentioned, I think I mentioned in my previous video, very key that the median line here has flipped. We're underneath the median line now, and it would have to go back above for any sign of any strength. But for me, this was looking very, very weak. And we could probably come down to the lower median line. So it's another bit of confluence to look out for. So if you see, if you follow this trend down, coming into the lower median line, you bring, you're coming into your 16K, 15K regions. Obviously we might overshoot the um, lower median line, these are just guidelines, um, but overall, um, I expect it to hold and offer some support. Okay, so we've got that there. Um, and then the other key pitchfork is this smaller one. So this is the smaller one here. We can zoom in on this. It's gone the four hourly. So this one is using these three pivots, first, second, third, original pitchfork once more on the log scale. And sorry, I just moved something by accident. Um, all right, yeah, so we're following the pitchfork very nicely. We haven't reached the upper warning line. Still, this is retaining the, all of the price action. And now we're just trending down. We obviously hit the lower warning line here. And then we had our bounce, went sideways for quite a while. Bit of resistance at the upper median line. Now we're just hovering around in between the upper median line and upper warning line. So we're actually overbought right now. Yeah, so it's going to come down very fast. There's a lot of room. This could easily come down and test. Maybe not the lower warning line again. That's looking a bit steep, but... It could be the lower median line again a bit of confluence in and around that point yeah so all coming in to around this point here in and around 15k uh so you've got your lower median line of the bigger pitch fork you've got your lower median line of the smaller pitch fork we have got um we've got this odb also so all this daily block we can see that best on the daily time frame see how it was generated so this line here it's at 14.6k yeah and if we just come across, see where it's generated. So it's off the bottom of this block here. It's actually a very nice doji candle here. Doji candles often act as a lot of value when price comes back to them. And yeah, interestingly, you will get people who are looking at this. Don't don't forget, I mentioned the after our December 2017, some people looked at this as a wave four and then the subsequent price action being a one, two, three. We're making a four and we're going to see a fifth. Interestingly, if we don't take out this high here, that count could still be on the cards. So, because obviously if that's a one, two, three, and you four, you don't want your four overlapping your one. And as long as it doesn't come beneath 15K, then that's that count's still intact. However, I'm not using that count for the reasons I've mentioned. There's nothing impulsive about this, okay? So this is not part of a wave three in my opinion, and this does not look like a wave two, okay? So yeah, for me, it, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you label it as because the, I'm still both counts will still see a correction down to around this point, I would say. Um, so yeah, th this is the point that we're coming down into. If we zoom in, some of the reasons for a bit of a collapse around this point. So we have got, you can argue, uh, a head and shoulders forming here. So we've got our left shoulder, head, right shoulder as such. Yeah, so we're, we're actually breaking our neckline at present. So there's your neckline connecting the left shoulder, right shoulder, neckline across. So here we, we managed to stay above a bit of support and now we're breaking it to the downside. So that's a key point. So it could actually start coming down very fast right now. Um, so there you go, there's your head and shoulders. Um, obviously this bit of data here, here on the daily time frame, acts as an order block in itself, at the bottom of it being this point here, which again, looking right, we have broken beneath it now. So this could very easily break down market structure, clearly lower highs as we go on. We've got a bit of a flat bottom on some of the alts. It's looking like a descending triangle here. I wouldn't, maybe you could label it as a descending triangle, um, but either way, it is coming down. It is coming down. Uh, it has to get back above this median line to look strong again. So the next key thing to discuss was Camarilla pivots. So let's just take a look at those. So bringing off everything else, let's bring on the pivots. Let's go on the weekly because I mentioned this is really, really key. For the last four years, you can really appreciate them on Bitcoin. So it's basically the R3, R4, S3, S4, which are the key levels you need to monitor. So all the way back in 2018, you can see we came, well, we had a December 2017 high and then we came down all the way down to the S4. Okay, for the subsequent year in 2019, we went all the way up, a little bit of support off the R3, went as high as the R4 
and then we close actually beneath the R3. So a bit of a show of weakness. Subsequent year, we make it as high as the R3. Because of the previous weakness, it then sold off as far as the S3 where it found support and actually finished the year sky high, um, breaking out of the R4, confirming a bull, bull market. And yeah, then subsequently, we obviously went above the R4, but it's been short lived. Yeah, we, we've come back down. Now we're using the R3 as clear resistance. And I would see the next bit of support is at 22K. You might see a little bit of a bounce there, but I see it as being brief. I see this market coming down to 15K. So this is at 14.874. So another bit of confluence in and around that 15K mark. Okay, so it's all kind of coming together. There's a lot of pieces of information, a lot of indicators all pointing towards that 15K mark. Um, so yeah, going off the weekly, this is what I'm looking at. Now, very key point about Camarilla pivots. So here on the weekly time frame, each period is one year. Okay. Uh, so, and the middle point is actually the opening price for the year. So you can see right now we're between the S1 and the R1. That basically means we're coming in to the opening price of the year. So that actually paints a very interesting candle, which I've got saved here. So this is your yearly chart for Bitcoin. You can see we're making this huge, huge uh, candle here with the massive wick to the upside basically we're coming back down to the opening price yeah so it'll probably start to turn red very very soon um, but yeah that's what it looks like on the linear scale on the yearly chart so it looks absolutely horrific um, so you can actually kind of foresee that using the camera pivots which is why I like to use them so um, yeah as soon as you go through this middle point you know heading towards your S1 rather than your R1 you are painting a red candle yeah uh, on the yearly chart okay so that's on the weekly we can look at the daily as well so on the daily each period represents a month uh, here obviously previous month we came down to the s3 bounced i think the s4 gets broken pretty soon it's at 28k which pretty much marks the bottom of this kind of range also uh, I, I i see it probably this month probably breaking the s4 finishing beneath it would not be surprised with that at all um okay so let's just take off the camera of pivots next thing to look at we can look at our simple moving averages weekly time frame on the and it's the 50 and the 20 that are key so let's just bring those on so i won't go all the way back talking about how key they are because i've mentioned it before but the 20 week moving average typically follows the trend and once you're beneath it the bias is bearish once you're above it the bias is bullish so clearly now the green line being a 20 week moving average it has broken to the downside in the past it has sometimes come back and retested it after hitting the 50 but i mentioned it doesn't always happen and in my opinion because of the aggressive move of this this move being aggressive to the downside because it's an impulsive c wave uh, I don't see it coming back anytime soon, which meant it would fly through the 50 as well, which it is doing right now. And yeah, I don't see it coming back to test the 20 just yet. Yeah. So the 20 weeks currently sits around 45K. So that is what it would need to get back above in order to turn long, uh, higher time frame bullish. Okay. So yeah, this market certainly heading down. This is another bit of resistance now, the 50 week simple moving average. OK, um, there was one other thing I wanted to discuss. So, yeah, I mentioned in my previous tweets um, a lot of weakness coming in in stocks. So we had the it's really interesting. The very simple indicators, S&P 500 here. This is hitting the upper warning line perfectly. This is following our 2008 financial crisis. First, second, third pivots and the upper warning line hits the T. I really do like this pitchfork, respecting the lines very nicely. And I love the way it's gone from the lower warning line through to the upper warning line. On top of that, I mentioned here, we have got the Dow uh, hitting 35K almost perfectly uh, and making a double top. NASDAQ coming in into 15K almost perfectly. Apple hitting $150 perfectly. And the Russell 2000 forming a triple top. Okay, so all of these things, all of these bits of confluence, as well as COVID kind of going out of control right now, it's all kind of piecing together suggesting we're going to see stock market weakness also um which again as i say could cause this next big move down on bitcoin though i do think long term it absorbs a lot of the selling pressure in stocks um so yeah these are the i think these are the main key things i want to talk about so i've mentioned the reasons that i'm targeting 15k so yeah that pretty much covers everything which so now i will just talk about the offer that i did mention so what it will be 
it, I did the offer not too long ago, well, a few months ago. We're going to do the same offer where we do free access to Cryptology for the first month only, um, cancel any time. And Cryptology, what is it? So I do a weekly update on Bitcoin and the top 15 market caps in crypto. Uh, so this is the product here. It's usually £50 a month. I price it very cheap, so it's affordable to everyone. Anyone who's involved in trading should be able to afford this very easily. Um, so yeah, it also includes my Discord access and the works. This is the works here. It's my educational course priced at $399. So do feel free to check that out if you want to uh, see what that's all about. But as I say, it's included here. The modules come out gradually uh, on a every few days and they're only accessible whilst you're subscribed. So do click on it, read about what's involved. It's all mentioned in here. We've got the whole educational program all detailed down here. Also, as I say, this can be free to you for the first month if you sign up. It's only available to the first three people to sign up. So you'll have to be quick. This is at wave618.com. The link for the discount will be in the bottom of this video, in the description to the video. I'll probably put it as a pinned comment as well. Um, so that is there if you want it. So I think we're going to wrap it up there, guys. And um, we're going to see how Bitcoin plays out over the next few weeks. But we could be heading into some very, very cheap territory where there could be some really good opportunities within crypto not too far away. So let's see how it plays out. Take care, guys.